G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday evening here in Australia and again the markets are up oh so close to that $2 trillion mark, just under it. Now we're $1.94 trillion. So again, I mean a good move of 2.5% has slowed down just a little bit. I expect that we're going to get you know some kind of a uh, little bit of a correction uh, sometime soon. Uh, I don't think it'll be a big one, but you know, we are sort of mid sort of week already. We've got a weekend coming up. There are no guarantees and I don't offer you financial advice. I just get a feeling like things are kind of pumped uh, a fair bit already and we might have a little bit of a, uh, yeah, just a slowdown uh, in the upwards trend. But again, we'll have to wait and see. Let's have a look how the market's doing in general though. Like I said, up 2.5%, nearly at that $2 trillion mark. Bitcoin price is now $46,000 and looking quite nice. Uh, volume up quite a lot, 42.4%. There you go. And we can see those ETH gas prices starting to climb again. And these just are for basic transactions. You know, you want to go to Uniswap or something like that, you're going to be paying upwards of sort of $30, $40 uh, at the moment. So that is unfortunate. Again, ETH 2.0, the full rollout, it cannot come soon enough. Uh, it really will, you know, at the moment it's still doing good. I mean, look, you know, no one's complaining about the price of ETH, but it's just those transaction fees. They are super uh, expensive. Uh, nowhere near as expensive as what they have been, but, you know, 40, 50 bucks to make a, you know, basic kind of smart contract transaction is just too much. Anyway, I've harped on about that many times. I don't like to keep doing it, but it is the most frustrating thing about Ethereum at the moment. But anyway, all right, we can see, look, it's generally up. I mean, Cardano, I was going to have a look at that when we get to the charts, but we can speak about it now. That's 19% in the last 24 hours. I talked about this three days ago. I spoke about a few coins three days ago, and we'll have a look at how they're doing. But things are looking pretty good. Really, nothing's down except for, again, the stable coins. Now, they're down because everyone's selling their stable coins and getting into altcoins and Ethereum and Bitcoin. So what's done the best in the last 24 hours in the top 100? What's been the biggest mover? Holy moly, IOTX. Never even heard of it before, but it is up nearly 200%. Axie Infinity, 57%. Like I said, the scary thing with Axie Infinity is it might have a whole lot more to go. Now, I'm not buying it. It's just already gone up way too much. But this hasn't gone truly viral worldwide yet. If it does, I shudder to think the price that it could go to. Ravencoin continues to pump. It's doing extremely well. Holo, uh, some uh, Helium news as well. Uh, they did a bit of a fundraising, got quite a bit of money. So that's probably part of it. And again, there's Ada, Luna doing extremely well. Polygon, again, making a nice move. So a number of good double-digit rises gains, whatever you want to call it. That has me, again, not overly concerned, but I just get the feeling like there's going to be a bit of a slowdown in the next day or two uh, before the weekend, but maybe on the weekend, because, you know, things can't keep going up like this. There is always going to be a moment where it pulls back a little bit. Again, never financial advice. We'll just wait and see. What about losses, though? Because we can see everything's absolutely pumping. Has there been any losses in the top 100? It's probably going to be stable coins mostly, but let's have a look. All right, ICP having a little bit of a pullback, Voyager having a little bit of a pullback, but look, the tiniest little pullbacks in ICP. Again, this went from down at sort of $30, $40 up to about $76, nearly $80, so it almost doubled its price in a bit of a short time. So again, of course, it's going to have a pullback, and the rest of the market's going to do the same. Then we just get into our, you know, basically stable coins, really, and things like that. And then, yeah, after that, it's just all green. So the market is looking very nice. Now, before we get onto the coins that I spoke about the other day, we'll have a look at a couple of news stories, and we won't take too long. BitMEX. So Arthur Hayes and everyone that was in trouble, they were arrested and all the rest of it brought back to America to face charges. Well, seems they have settled their charges with the CFTC and FinCEN, and they've agreed to pay $100 million. Be interesting to see if there's any other charges that they're facing over, it was just simply that, you know, the regulators wanted to get a hold of them and, you know, get their piece of the pie because that's generally what it is. They just want to get some money 
and then that is it, or whether they still have further charges. I can't remember exactly, you know, I think there were some other charges in there for Arthur Hayes and some of them, but yeah, very interesting to see if it was simply they had to come back, pay a little bit of money to the government slash regulators, and then that was it. But maybe BitMEX is now back uh, up and on the rise, but we'll have to wait and see. They did have a lot of issues, and I think they will be closely monitored by regulators. So, you know, if they were pulling shady stuff, and there are a lot of accusations that they were uh, prior to all of this, I, I think they're probably going to be very cautious about doing any of, the other, any of that anymore. But, you know, then again, the big banks and that still do it, and even though they pay the billions of dollars and, you know, apologise and all the rest of it, they still get caught out again. Will that be the same for the crypto uh, space? I think the big players eventually will probably turn out to be just like banks, whatever ones they are, and I'm not sure BitMEX will fit into that, but you know, we'll wait and see, time will tell. All right, massive hack, $600 million hacked from the Poly Network, and it seems like the hacker might be ready to return the funds. So there's three different wallets that have been made up for the hacker to return the funds. And I think the reason the hacker might return be returning the funds is because I heard that they took some of the uh, money that they hacked and put it onto the FTX exchange, which has KYC. So I think they kind of gave themselves away there, and now they'll be returning uh, a lot of it, if not basically all of it. And my gut feeling is that's the only reason they're returning it, is they made a silly mistake, didn't really think it through, and now they've been caught out, and they're going to say, oh, this was just to show you, you know, that there were bugs in the system and I was never actually going to, you know, rip anyone off. But anyway, $600 million, that's a lot of uh, coin for people to be, you know, down. And it looks like, at the moment at least, you know, people might be getting their money back. And that would be good for everyone who lost their money. The hacker, yeah, not so good for him, her, they, whatever it may be. You know, to take that money and put it onto a KYC uh, exchange was pretty silly. I mean, you know, again, <laughs> silly as in the criminal uh, element of it, but, you know, good for, you know, people who lost their money. It looks like they'll get it back. All right, Coinbase. Holy moly, sees record quarter two revenue. Quarter two was through all that bear market stuff that we went through. And again, I don't really call it a bear market, and I shouldn't have said it like that, but that correction, they still saw record revenue. 2 billion and 95% of that came from transaction fees. So again, sometimes you need to take a step back and you know, not panic about things that are happening and you know, take advice from people who've been around for a while and not financial advice because none of us other than, you know, financial advisors can, you know, give you that kind of advice, but a lot of people who've been in this space for a while were saying this isn't a bear market, this is just a correction. Yet there were other people saying, oh no, it's a bear market and it's going down to you know 20,000 and 10,000 and 8,000 and it was definitely possible, even I said, look, it's possible that happens, but it comes down to is it probable? Is it likely that that would happen? I didn't think it was, hence why I didn't panic sell anything. I held on, I actually continued to buy and now I'm doing quite well. And again, we'll have a look at the, some of the things I spoke about just the other day. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn like I'm some kind of expert, but I do have some experience in this space. I've been here for a little while and really have put a lot of time into studying crypto. Again, doesn't make me an ex expert and I'm never gonna offer you financial advice. All right, US Senator claims support for the crypto bill amendments despite blocking the bill. So this is Senator Shelby and this, you know, this is annoying, but you know I understand you know Senator Shelby's position. Claims he supported the cryptocurrency currency provisions of the amendment to the infrastructure bill uh, that his sole objection blocked uh, from passing the Senate. So he just wanted more money to be put toward defense, and it didn't happen. So that was enough for it to get blocked. He's got his agenda, you know, like everybody does, even we have our agenda, and just because you've got an agenda doesn't mean it's a bad agenda. But his agenda is he wants more money for you know the defense bill and you know fair enough i'm not american so i can't really say too much they spend a whole lot of money on their defense force system uh and you know some people are all for it and aren't but in the end it is what it is but i get the feeling like the bill is going to get across the line it's just a matter of time and i get a little bit of more toing and froing before the senators come together and they will pass a much more favorable crypto bill and i think even uh, Janet Yellen and all you know her people who allegedly you know created this bill 
they know what's coming. They simply brought out this bill knowing that it wouldn't get passed to try to keep the prices down for as long as they can. I've been saying this for a while. The big players, you know, they, they want to get as much control as they can and they're doing their best to slow things down before this really gets up and starts running. And it's already starting to run anyway because there's some big players that want it to run and there's other big players that don't. And unfortunately, the big players that don't, they, they're just they're always going to have a hard time trying to beat crypto. There are too many people who really love this stuff and are really getting into this space and they want to see it grow and they far outweigh the people who don't. And a number of you know popular YouTubers out there say, you know, shorting Bitcoin is one of the worst things you can do. There's a short period of time where shorting Bitcoin can be quite profitable and that's about a quarter of the time, which seems like a lot, but it really isn't because the other three quarters of the time, Bitcoin and i.e. the whole entire crypto market is going up and it's going up in percentages that just haven't been seen in any other market anywhere else ever. Like you look at what Bitcoin's done, look at what Ethereum is starting to do and look at what some of these other coins are starting to do. I mean, NFTs, some of them have literally gone up a million percent in the last three years. You could have bought them for next to nothing. You know, like there were some NFTs that went for three Ethereum three years ago, which wasn't a lot. That's about $6,000 you know, US dollars, thereabouts, maybe even less, depending on when they bought them. And now they're being sold for hundreds of thousands, if not sometimes millions of dollars. So that is unbelievable. And that's the power of crypto. This space is unbelievable. There is nothing else out there that compares. And again, the big players know that. Right, Helium Network, like I said, so it gained 40% after a $111 million fundraise. That is you know, that shows that there's people out there that are willing to put a lot of money in. And then that, you know, showed in the price. The market got the news and everyone's chased after it. Hence why Helium is starting to pump. So congratulations to everyone who's in Helium. I don't have any. Unfortunately, I felt like I missed it. And it just wasn't one of those things that, you know, I, you can only put your money in so many different places. I didn't put mine into Helium. Uh, there were other projects that I liked that I'd been following and you know, we'll wait and see. I know uh, Ian Bellina from Token Metrics, he's quite a big fan of it. And I believe he's done well. He got in very, very early. So he's already doing great. Circle. So they are looking to become a full reserve national commercial bank. Wow. Again, this crypto space just becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And Circle is one of the big players. And I mean, they become a full reserve national commercial bank. That will be next level for, you know, the first cryptocurrency, you know, sort of, you know, platform, whatever you want to call it, that can get that kind of status in the old traditional finance world will really set a new benchmark. I mean, I think PayPal is going to be absolutely massive in cryptocurrency, you know, uh, Square Cash App likewise. And we can already see that, you know, exchanges like Kraken got banking licenses. I really do think the old banks, their time is numbered. Uh, and they won't even be what they uh, look like today. They will be broken up into sort of pieces and their names will change and things like that. And they will be very crypto focused in the future. I, I truly believe everything's going on the blockchain. It'll be tokenized. And again, these old traditional finance banks, they, will, you know, they won't completely disappear because they're buying into this stuff, but they just won't be the main players anymore. The smaller companies that they've bought into will slowly start to take over from those banks and things like that. That's my true personal opinion. Uh, and Poly Network, as we already said, you know, it looks like a $600 million hack, $611 million, I think. It looks like the people are going to get at least some of their money back, maybe not all of it, because the hacker has outed, you know, himself, herself, or themselves, whatever it may be. So, you know, again, good news uh, for all the people who lost the money and, you know, whoever the hacker was they really didn't think that through and that's you know generally how a lot of uh, criminals are not all of them there are smart criminals out there but a majority of them are not that smart and they make silly mistakes like this and that's how they get caught but uh, anyway you know yeah I don't want to say too much uh, because yeah it is what it is and, and we don't want to see people lose money you know I'm not so much against people you know, you know, going out there and doing their own thing and trying stuff, but when it you know affects other people, i.e., you're taking money off people that have probably worked really hard for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm against that kind of stuff. All right, let's move on and have a look at the coins that I was recommending 
not so much recommending the other day, but said I was putting money into because I don't recommend anything and I can't. But ADA, 23% gain in a matter of three days. Now, 23% doesn't sound like that much, but you go to traditional markets, you'll be struggling to make that over a year sometimes. Now, I'm not saying there's nothing that does 20%. There definitely is, you know, things that go up above 20% uh, in the traditional stock markets, but not in three days. And the scary thing is, this is after we've bounced off the 200-day moving average here. I could see this coming and it was just gaining ground. Then we had a bit of a pullback and I was like, this is going to get ready to go. And sure enough, it had. Look where the 200-day moving average is back here. I mean, look at the kind of variance from it. And again, this is all the variance we've got at the moment. This could get way bigger. So, you know, what kind of price it's going to go to, who knows. But it was at, you know, $2.30 not that long ago. So get ready. Things are looking interesting. XRP, same thing. You know, I saw it. It was bouncing off this line where it had been for a long time and it was still under the 200-day moving average. So there was a lot of, you know, things kind of lining up right there and I just thought, yep, this is going to be a good buy. So again, bought some XRP and I'm up 15% in three days. And I, again, I get the feeling like it's got more to go and it, I think it will really go crazy if and even, you know, hopefully when the SEC case gets completed. I don't know if that's going to come anytime soon. But again, this is the average sort of price line of where XRP goes. Look how much higher it gets up off it. And again, so $1.80, we haven't even got there yet. Uh, you know, well, I mean, we have. We got up to $1.80 there, but we haven't got back to its old all-time highs. So looking quite nice. Chilies, same thing, another good move, 20% in three days. Again, we were playing with that 200-day moving average. We'd been way above it. We could see it was just flatlining for a really long time. I had the feeling it was going to make a move, uh, you know, put some money in, and sure enough, again, 20% in three days. I'm not complaining at all. Engine, same sort of thing. Again, we've been trading sort of sideways for a while, toying with the 200-day moving average. Again, 15 16%. Uh, and again, this is just the start though. This is, again, not financial advice. We don't know for sure. Nothing's guaranteed. But I get the feeling like we're going to see these kind of gaps in the 200-day moving average again. And I think, you know, seeing $3 from engine uh, is not going to be too hard from here. Again, this is like, this is, it's formed a big base over again. You know, similar to something sort of here or similar to something it did back here. And then you see these kind of moves after. Now, the biggest moves in a bull run come at the end. So while these look pretty good, the biggest one is still likely yet to come. So what price engine is going to go to? I have, <clears throat> excuse me. I have no idea and I can't tell you exactly when it's going to happen. But the biggest moves based on history are yet to come. And that is crazy to think that, you know, again, you, you're picking it up at $1.60 something now and it made a 15% move in three days. So, yeah, who knows what that percentage is going to be in the next two, three, four, five months, whenever the peak may come. And I'm not going to be able to sell at the exact top and I don't need to, but I am going to be taking some profits. You know, it's based more on time than it is on price and things like that. I'll just be looking at the market, getting a feel for it. And when I think like it's time to start taking some profits, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to scale out the same way I sort of scaled in. Uh, and that's my plan. And if you've been watching my channel, you'll know that. Last but not least, Matic, same thing, 17% in just a couple of days. And again, Matic has been, you know, you know an average price of about $1.07 for quite some time. It got a whole lot higher, came back down wick below. And again, traveling sideways other than this, you know, capitulation move to try and shake everybody out. And now we're waiting to see just how high this can go. But again, at the moment, sitting at about sort of a dollar twenty-six thereabouts, it has been two dollars and what is that sort of twenty cents? A little bit over two dollars twenty cents, two dollars thirty, two dollars forty thereabouts, something like that. So it can still nearly double from where it is just to get back to old all-time highs. And imagine if we see, imagine this is this before it starts to do this kind of crazy again all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another pretty hard to not be on that game train at the moment you should all be on there but just you know
beware there's likely to be a small correction or at least a slowdown a lull in the market before we you know start blasting off even higher and i'll see you next time